The Wellsboro and Corning operates on what remains of the former Conrail Corning Secondary. In its original form, the Corning Secondary was in fact the New York Central Fallbrook Division which originally ran from Lyons, New York to Williamsport, Pennsylvania where it reached its ally against the Pennsylvania Railroad, the Philadelphia and Reading known by most people today as the Reading Railroad and its Catawissa Railroad subsidiary at Newberry Junction. A key component of the Fallbrook Division was the Jersey Shore, Pine Creek, and Buffalo Railroad that was essentially built to carry coal from the mines in Pennsylvania to the canal and lake system in New York State, ultimately accessing the Erie Canal and the New York Central Main Line that cross-cut upstate New York. In the mid-1800s, a man named John McGee purchased a controlling interest in the Corning and Blasberg Railroad and through a series of acquisitions ultimately led to the formation of the Fallbrook Railway. On May 1, 1889, the New York Central leased the Fallbrook Railway for 999 years and the railroad became known as the New York Central Fallbrook District, Pennsylvania Division. In 1914, the Fallbrook District, a distance of about 257 miles, became the Fallbrook Division of the New York Central System and again, shortly thereafter, the division returned to being published as the New York Central's Pennsylvania Division. However, even to present day, what trackage remains is affectionately referred to by many as the Fallbrook. Probably the most notable aspect of the Fallbrook line was a spectacular gorge that it crossed known as the Grand Canyon of Pennsylvania. The New York Central was merged into Penn Central, Penn Central to Conrail and all that, and the Fallbrook line became Conrail's Corning Secondary. January 2019 marks the 30th anniversary of the beginning of the rail removal from the Corning Secondary between Wellsboro and Jersey Shore, Pennsylvania as the first rail removal train operated north from Newberry Junction in January of 1989 to begin the four-month process of pulling up the trackage through the Pennsylvania Grand Canyon. In 1992, a company called Growth Resources bought what remained of the line from Wellsboro to Corning, New York from Conrail and began operating it as the Wellsboro and Corning Railroad in 1993 until 1998 when it was bought outright by another company known as the Miles Group. One very interesting thing to note is that during its ownership under Growth Resources, the Wellsboro and Corning was controlled by Richard Roby, the owner of the North Shore Railroad System in central Pennsylvania. In March of 2010, the 35-mile Wellsboro and Corning acquired four ex-Quebec, North Shore, and Labrador SD40-2s to handle the heavy business of moving frac sand. That's the material used in the gas well drilling in the Marcellus Shale Formation. Marcellus Shale underlies most of central and eastern Pennsylvania. The units were numbered 301, 302, 307, and 309 and still wore their original gray, yellow, and orange QNSL colors with WCOR replacing the Canadian Roads initials. The Genesee and Wyoming Corporation now owns the Wellsboro and Corning and to date I'm pretty sure that these big SDs still wear their original QNSL paint. The Columbia and Reading Railway operates on approximately one and one quarter miles of the ex Reading Railroad's Reading and Columbia branch in Columbia, Pennsylvania and that's a lot of Reading and Columbia. Its sole purpose was to bring gondolas to Frank Sal's salvage company for scrap loading. The locomotive was stored on his property within the confines of the scrapyard when it wasn't being used. The line came dangerously close to becoming a rail trail after being abandoned, though thankfully that didn't happen. Frank Sal himself purchased the line before the borough could with the intent of getting rail service into his business back in early 2004. Anvil International, the last shipper on the line when it was abandoned, had expressed interest in possibly receiving rail shipments again itself. The line still exists to this day and the railroad's power is an Alco S2 number 226. Shown here in Enola in 2010 en route to Columbia at the railway start, the JNCX number 27 is the former Pioneer Valley number 106, nay Frankfurt and Cincinnati 106 before that, and possibly a C&O locomotive even before that. It came from the Claremont and Concord Railroad who bought it from the Pioneer Valley Railroad. It was operable but needed a lot of work so the Claremont and Concord Railroad allegedly bought the former Green Mountain Railroad number 305 which was in much better shape. One possible side note to this story is that the Middletown and Hummelstown Railroad had a small switching operation in Columbia which they apparently operated on a contract basis for an industry or two with a 44 or 65 tonner. 
The Columbia and Reading could be anything from a new operator to the same folks with a different locomotive, or it could be a contractor or even a new contractee. Given that the Middletown and Hummelstown had one Alco switcher, it wouldn't be a stretch to surmise that the Red Alco could be related to the MNA. Delaware Lackawanna Railroad Alco's pull train PT-98 eastbound through Hollister, Pennsylvania in this November 8, 2016 photo. The train is moving cars from Scranton to the Norfolk Southern Railroad interchange in Slateford. The train is traveling on the former Delaware Lackawanna and Western Railroad main line. The Delaware Lackawanna and Western built the Delaware and Cobbs Gap Railroad beginning in 1856 to link Scranton to the Delaware River. When completed, this railroad and the already existing Lincoln's Gap Railroad to Great Bend were combined to form the DLNW. A connection with the Central Railroad of New Jersey gave the Lackawanna Railroad access to the Hudson River and New York. Eventually, anthracite coal became the major commodity which traveled on this route. With eventual extension north and west into New York State, the Lackawanna had the shortest of the five railroad routes between Buffalo and New York City. The Lackawanna was generally a prosperous railroad because of the volume of anthracite of coal that it carried. By the years before World War II, anthracite traffic began to decline as other fuels attracted more customers. Other forms of transportation, primarily trucks, helped to reduce general merchandise traffic. Fuel rationing during the war provided the Lackawanna and all other railroads with a brief respite, but the end of the war continued the decline in traffic. By the late 1950s, the DLNW and many other railroads were in serious financial difficulty. The solution proposed was the merger of smaller railroads to form larger ones that would be more efficient. This was the route chosen by the Lackawanna, which merged with the parallel Erie Railroad in October 1960. The Erie Lackawanna never achieved the hopes of its proponents and continued to suffer from the problems which faced all railroads, most particularly those in the eastern United States. Compounding the Erie Lackawanna problems was damage caused by Tropical Storm Agnes, which forced the railroad into bankruptcy in 1972. The EL was eventually forced to seek inclusion into Conrail, a government-formed railroad which was to include major portions of all the bankrupt eastern roads, joining Penn Central, the Reading, the Central Railroad of New Jersey, the Lehigh Valley, the Lehigh and Hudson River, and the often forgotten Ann Arbor. Conrail began to streamline its routes to eliminate duplicate lines and the DLNW line was determined to be unneeded. Conrail abandoned and removed the Lackawanna cutoff across New Jersey and announced plans to abandon the remainder of the line to Scranton. The city of Scranton purchased 13 miles from Scranton to Moscow to provide an excursion route for Steamtown USA which was planning to relocate to Scranton. The Lackawanna County Railroad Authority acquired the track from Moscow to Mount Pocono and the Monroe County Railroad Authority purchased the tracks from Mount Pocono to Annalamink. The Lackawanna County Railroad Authority selected Genesee Valley Transportation and its Delaware Lackawanna Railroad subsidiary to operate its Pocono and Carbondale lines in August 1993. 
and Monroe County authorized DL to operate its portion of the railroad. In May 2006, the Lackawanna County and Monroe County Railroad Authorities merged to form the Pennsylvania Northeast Regional Rail Authority, which owns all the track from Scranton to Slateford Junction near Portland. Today, DL freight trains and excursion trains operated by the Steamtown National Historic Site in Scranton use this track. The Pocono Mountain area of northeastern Pennsylvania has a rich history of rail lines associated with mountain resorts. One of the lines through the area, including this scene in the Delaware Water Gap, is the former Erie Lackawanna, ex-Delaware Lackawanna Scranton Division Main Line. After the 1960 merger of the Erie Railroad with the DLNW, the company owned two routes from Binghamton to the eastern seaboard near Hoboken and Secaucus, New Jersey. They were the former Erie route via Port Jervis and the former Lackawanna line over the Pocono Mountains via Scranton. Genesee Valley Transportation's Delaware Lackawanna Railroad was formed in 1993 to operate from the Scranton area eastward to Portland, Pennsylvania, along with routes north and south of Scranton previously owned by the Delaware and Hudson and the Laurel Valley Trolley Line. Another picture-perfect portrait along the Delaware Lackawanna Railroad is westbound train PT-97 in Portland, Pennsylvania. The train is led by Mohawk Adirondack and Northern Railroad number 2045, a Montreal Locomotives Works M420, bought new for the British Columbia Railroad in September of 1973. The MHWA is an affiliate of the DL, which are both part of the Genesee Valley Transportation Company. Through a series of leases between Norfolk Southern, the Southern Tier West Rail Authority, and private investors, the Western New York and Pennsylvania commenced operations between Hornell, New York, and Quarry, Pennsylvania on April 23, 2001. In later years, the Pike expanded 40 plus miles west of Quarry to Meadville, Pennsylvania, and 35 miles south to Oil City, Pennsylvania, as well as the former Conrail, Nay Penn Central, Nay Pennsylvania Railroad, Buffalo Line south of Olean, New York to Driftwood, Pennsylvania. Another blossoming short line group in the Conrail era are the North Shore Lines. With most trackage owned by Cedar Cog in North Central Pennsylvania, the North Shore system became the designated operator of several of Cedar Cog's lines. The Lycoming Valley Railroad, part of the North Shore system, owned this former Pittsburgh and Shawmut SW9 number 231 and is resting at the former Reading Railroad Newberry Junction. Also seen at Newberry Junction are a pair of second-hand Lycoming Valley units. The 9050 and 9052, both GP20Ms, were new for the Milwaukee Road as GP9s. 